We are back with the 2024 Polaris Ranger XD 15. Hundred This time out in Wyoming, we've spent the better part of two days ripping around some of the most amazing trails at a beautiful ranch. You know, we typically give you five things we love, five things we hate, and then tell you exactly who we think this rig is for. This is gonna be a little different. After spending some time with the rig, I wanna go over some things that uh, I haven't seen covered elsewhere. Neat features about the thing that sort of sets it apart from not only the rest of the Ranger lineup, but the rest of the UTV world. Let's get started. <laughs> The first thing we're gonna talk about here are the brakes. That is a vacuum booster, just like an automotive style braking system, vacuum over hydraulic, which means you have really, really confident braking. That's important because this thing is, as Polaris says, extreme duty. You can tow more than any other machine, 3,500 pounds, you can put 1,500 pounds in the bed, and in order to control all of that, you need to be able to stop it. The brakes on this thing are fantastic. Speaking of capacities. Another important part of this thing is there are three different heat exchangers up front. Radiators, basically. You've got one for coolant, you've got one for CVT transmission oil, and you've got another for the air conditioning system. Let's take a look. So you can see behind the grill, that sucker runs all the way across and all the way down here. And like I said, there are three of them. One, two, and three. Earlier we were chatting with Polaris and they said these radiators are as big as what you would find on an F-150, which means this thing will stay properly cool cool even while you're working its tail off. Speaking of working its tail off, this is a heavy machine. We're talking, I don't know, I think uh, dry weight's around 2,600 pounds, something like that. So by the time you've got fluids and all the rest of that, you're knocking on 2,800 pounds. And in order to make sure that you have the recovery gear you need, Polaris fitted a 6,000 pound winch to this thing. It's a higher capacity winch than on any other UTV we've seen. Another interesting detail, this thing has 15 inches of ground clearance bone stock. This is a North Star Edition, comes with 30 inch tires. The premium comes with 29 inch tires. More impressively, Polaris says that you can fit 32 inch tires without modifying a single thing. Now we need to talk about the cab. There are all sorts of things that I like about this thing. Number one, this is a better sealed cab than Polaris has ever had. Part of that is due to a new, much stronger chassis. I think they said it's, it's like 50% stronger than the outgoing model. And that makes a difference specifically because you don't have that chassis flex. Chassis flex allows gaps to open up in body panels when you get more dust intrusion. We were driving around on some of the dustiest trails I have ever been on and I am clean. Yeah, we've got some dust in here from opening the door and closing the doors and rolling the windows down when we shouldn't roll the windows down. But for the most part, this is a dust-free environment. That's pretty great. That's partly because the HVAC system has an actual, check that out, in-cabin air filter. That's the sort of stuff you see on full-size pickup trucks, full-size cars. And as far as I know, there aren't any other manufacturers currently doing that. It's, you know, a small detail that makes a big difference in terms of how clean you are, the type of air you're breathing all day, especially when you're out working in the dust. The next thing we need to talk about is this trip transmission. There's all sorts of cool stuff going on here. Number one, this is Polaris's steel drive transmission. What does that mean? Well, it's a true automotive grade CVT. A steel belt, no more rubber belts. It's oil cooled and it is a lifetime part that belt. Polaris says 50,000 miles is approximately what they expect to get out of that transmission. That's deeply impressive. Yeah, you got to change the oil every 6,000 miles, but 6,000 miles is still a buttload of miles for a UTV. It's way better than replacing a rubber belt all the time. That also means this thing shifts incredibly easy. Look at that. One finger. <laughs> Find me another ATV, another UTV that shifts that easy. More importantly, it allows you to creep. So you let off the throttle and the thing just rolls just like a regular vehicle. It's just a little more relaxing to use. You're not doing the two foot shuffle like you'd used to do in the past. Another cool part about that, that in tow haul mode, if you're on a steep hill, vehicle will automatically hold itself there. Other cool stuff. North Star Editions come with a true glass windshield with a windshield wiper and a windshield washer. That seems like a small thing, but especially on a dusty day like today was, it meant that I could keep that thing clean all day long, no problem. Ooh, forgot about one more thing inside the cab. Check this out. Adjustability. Number one, you've got this little guy, tilt and telescope. The seat slides forward, slides back. You don't have any tilt adjustment, so you still have the sort of, sort of buckboard feel, but the seats are so much nicer. You've got sort of faux leather stuff going on here. They're bolstered, they're super comfortable, they're super nice, and 
You've got a center console. How great is that? You've got one, two, three, four, four cup holders here. Others have as many as six. Uh, you're gonna be watering a lot of trees. You now have access to the under seat storage without having to get your passenger out. Aaron mentioned this before, but it's worth talking about again. You have a power dump bed. That's important when you can put 1,500 pounds back there. Nobody's lifting that amount of weight. There's an electric motor waiting to do it for you. Speaking of the bed, check this out. The tailgate, a thing that we constantly complain about on utility UTVs. It can seat two people. It is stout enough for that. It also has cup holders built into the bed. How neat is that? Of course, you've got your usual five gallon bucket storage. You've got a ruler built in here. That's neat. More cup holders. It's just really well thought out. The bed comes with these extruded aluminum rails for the lock and ride system. This is just sort of a dummy latch, but to give you an idea, it is super nice. Super, super nice. All sorts of accessories you can bolt to that thing. Super neat, big bed rack, all sorts of cool stuff. Of course, we can't talk about this thing without talking about the engine. It's a 1500cc, the biggest engine in any utility rig you can buy. It puts at 110 horsepower, 105 pound-feet of torque. That's all great, but it doesn't tell you anything about the character of the thing. It's great. It's a triple in a class that's dominated by parallel twins, V-twins, which are noisy. They sound like hair dryers. They're aggravating. This thing sounds great. You can hear it inside. It's not loud. The cabin's super quiet, but it actually is a pleasant sounding machine. I, you know, there are maybe two other UTVs on the planet that I can actually say that about. Bonus, check this out. Polaris says that they actually did fluid dynamic testing to make sure that the surfaces on this rig will not blast you back in the face if you're power washing the rig. <laughs> As anyone who's gotten a face full of grimy mud can tell you, that's an excellent thing. It's also true that this is still a Ranger, which means that you can power wash the inside. All of that nice fancy material, unfazed by water. Hey guys, before we go any farther, I need you to do me a favor, like, comment, subscribe. It means that we can keep making this fun stuff and it means that you will be the first to see it the second it drops. Thanks. Now let's talk about things I hate, things that bother me. First, the biggest one. Instead of having a differential lock button, you have a differential unlock button. So the thing defaults with the rear locker locked up. Great. If you want turf mode, you have to push that button. You've got to be either stopped or below, I think like five miles an hour for it to engage. You know, I it, it's just contrary to what you typically think of. You think of a locker as being open primarily and then locked uh, when you push the button. So that's a weird choice. It's a strange choice they made. The second thing I hate, there are a lot of amazing finishes in here. I love the steering wheel. I love the ride command. I love all the storage. And you've got some switches that are excellent. And you've got other switches ugh, that are not. These feel cheap, they feel like they're gonna, mm. These feel cheap, they feel like they're gonna come off in your hand. I don't, I don't, I don't love how these feel. The third thing, and you may notice that I'm being pretty nitpicky. Well, that's because this is a really good machine. Players has stuffed up the game in a really big way, and the little misses really stand out because of this. You've got your windshield washer, right? So, you push the windshield washer, windshield washing, you let off the switch, and your wiper just keeps on trucking. Which is fine if you remember to shut it off. If you don't, you wind up driving around looking like an idiot. Speaking of windshield wipers, at this point, I kind of want an intermittent setting. Polaris says this cab seals well enough that you can drive it through a car wash. That means that guys are gonna find themselves out in a proper deluge. Sometimes that windshield wiper is not gonna be enough to keep up. The fourth thing I hate, these gauges are kind of tough to read. So check this out. They're black face gauges, which fine, they look nice. Your indicator for four wheel drive is over over here it's kind of hard to see it sort of interferes with the steering wheel depending on where you've got that located so that's kind of tough to see which is really my biggest complaint uh, I want that either in the middle over here uh, somewhere easier it, it does show up on the ride command screen but again that's a pretty small little guy I, I just want to be able to, to clearly and easily see what mode I'm in while I'm driving around the fifth thing and this is not a Polaris exclusive thing I want a horn you know, you're 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 trying to, to get people's attention. Somebody, you know, maybe they've got a door open, maybe they've got their tailgate down, whatever. <laughs> you're stuck either trying to get a radio or you know, call somebody. I just want a horn. I just want a horn. Which brings us to who is this machine for? The base premium starts at twenty nine thousand dollars. This North Star guy is thirty nine thousand dollars, and I can hear the comments already. Why don't you just buy a pickup truck? It's the same reason that you don't hunt pheasant with a rifle, or you don't hunt 
elk with a 20 gauge because there are certain tools for certain jobs. Yeah, they may cost the same, but that doesn't mean they're good at the same thing. That's the exact case here. What Polaris has built with this rig is a time machine. It will save you time. If you have a hunting blind that's 60 miles out down some rough two track, <laughs> you can rip down that two track at 40 and 50 miles an hour. You're not beating yourself up. You're not beating your pickup truck up. You know that it's going to get you in and out regardless. You can also go places that a regular pickup truck can't go. We had this thing up some insane scrambles. It's locked front and rear. It's got a short wheelbase. It's an excellent, excellent little billy goat. More importantly, there is no pickup truck you can buy that can do what this thing can do off-road and also haul 1,500 pounds in the bed. Ford Raptor can't do it. Toyota Tacoma TRD Pro can't do it. TRX can't do it. None of those things can do what this machine can do for $40,000. So who is it for? It's for the boss, man. Your boss isn't driving a base F-150, right? He's driving a King Ranch. This is a King Ranch. It's nice, it's comfortable. Yeah, it's expensive, but it feels like a proper machine and it feels like it is worth every penny of the asking price. I know that sounds insane. And if you doubt me, here's what you need to do. Con your buddy into buying one. Con your boss into buying one. Ride right seat. Get him to let you drive that sucker around and tell me if I'm wrong. So do I think the the XD1500 is a good thing. Yeah, it is a leap forward, not just for utility side-by-sides, but also for side-by-sides in general. It's comfortable, it's quiet. You can bop along at 40 miles an hour, sipping your coffee, having a good conversation with the guy next to you or the lady next to you without having to worry about going deaf or shouting the entire time. It is capable, it feels solid, it feels worth the cash. If you wanna read more, we're gonna have a full review coming out soon. Be sure to check that out over at utvdriver.com. You can also hit us up on all of our social channels. Uh, we will want to hear from you. We want to see exactly what you're riding. We'll see you there. <music>